Lent is a season of reflection and contemplation that calls us to repentance and to follow in the footsteps of Jesus as he goes to the cross. But Lent doesn't need to be a constant downer where we focus on our failings. It can also be a time when we recognize the joys of belonging, the growth in knowledge and wisdom, the support of the community around us. It can be a time for knowing we need more, that we want more, more Christ, more discipleship, more discipline. This devotional series incorporates many of the themes in our Lent 2022 worship series, Gathered Together. There is space for confession and repentance of sin, but there's also space for encouragement and moments of reconciliation and recommitment. Let us be honest with ourselves and with God. Through it all is the image of the Christ who comes, not to condemn, but to save. Hear this word from the Gospel of Luke. At that time, some Pharisees approached Jesus and said, Go, get away from here, because Herod wants to kill you. Jesus said to them, Go, tell that fox, Look, I'm throwing out demons and healing people today and tomorrow, and on the third day I will complete my work. However, it is necessary for me to travel today, tomorrow, and the next day, because it's impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who will kill the prophets and stone those who were sent to you, how often I have wanted to gather your people just as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you didn't want that. Look, your house is abandoned. I tell you, you won't see me until the time comes when you say, Blessings on the one who comes in the Lord's name. Jesus receives warning from the Pharisees that Herod is looking to harm him. And perhaps they're genuinely concerned for his safety, or maybe they're just trying to keep him away before more trouble starts. Either way, Jesus' response is equal parts defiance and faith. He calls Herod a fox and then recommits to his work. In the face of danger and threats from the king, Jesus persists in doing ministries of healing with the people. The church, as an institution, is often at a crossroads. There are threats from without and within to the established order, the things that we love and cherish. And whether those are traditions or leadership structures or methods of worship, When our institutions or communities get threatened, we are tempted to respond in ways that ignore the needs of the people for the sake of expediency. We may even do harm in the name of preserving what has come before, something we deem more important. But Jesus doesn't seem interested in pursuing those same paths. He delays his exit from Jerusalem while acknowledging the danger of doing so, so that he can heal more people and cast out more demons. In this time, when we expect so much to change due to the pandemic, and even as my church, the United Methodist Church, awaits a seemingly inevitable split, Jesus' actions here challenge us to remember one another. Christ's church existed long before most of our traditions. Christ's church existed long before most of what we think of as church. And in some way, we all know and get that church is bigger than us or this moment, bigger than what we can control. And as we look to the future, uncertain about what shape church might take, as we imagine the changes that will come to our institutions and traditions, let us remember to be compassionate and committed in the ways that Jesus is, tending to the hurting and resisting what is evil. Let us strive to exemplify and offer God's grace and compassion to those who have already been pushed to the edges of our communities. Let us be the church. Take a moment in silent prayer and confession. If you're looking to record your journey, you can use a journal of your own or click on the link in the description of this video. Let us pray. Compassionate Christ, Help us to be a channel for your healing, tending, life-giving work in our community and in the world. 
Amen.